Hello everyone, my name is Nuvola and welcome to another video. Today's video is an automatic tree farm and it produces up to 15,000 logs an hour. It's a pretty complicated build, so let me show you how it works. Once you've entered the farm, all you gotta do is flip the switch above the door, which starts the farm. You walk alongside the storage and you enter what I call the production chamber. All you gotta do here is place down saplings on top of this dirt block and trees are then automatically grown and shoved to the front of the farm. In the front here, TNT continuously explodes due to a TNT duper, which breaks the logs, which all end up in the chest right here. To turn off the farm, all you gotta do is flip the switch again above the door, and that's it. Now let's go and build this. Okay, so we're going to start off by creating the collection area. You wanna create a rectangle of nine by seven blocks. In the corner on the right, you wanna place a double chest and a hopper facing into it in the corner. Place a stair on top of it so that you can still open the chest. This hopper will collect all of your wood. We now want to create a water flow going towards this hopper. Place down water sources on the back side. This creates a water flow towards the front. You will notice that it doesn't flow to the corner yet, but don't worry, we'll fix that later on. Right now, I want you to create a platform at the back with an extra block on this side. Now go to the back and place a piston right next to this block facing the back. And to the side of it you want to place a glass block. We're now going to place two observers. One facing away from the glass block and the other one facing upwards. Just like this. These are part of the triggering system, which activates the farm. To finish that part off, we're going to place a sticky piston facing this way. Place an observer facing downwards in front of it. Place a building block next to the sticky piston with a redstone dust on top. Place a building block next to this redstone dust and a lever on this block. Okay, so next up is the bone meal system, which will automatically grow your trees. Start by placing a dirt block on top of the piston. Then, you want to place a dropper facing upwards and a dropper behind it facing into it. Lastly, you want to place a third dropper facing into that one. This third one should be above the observer that's looking upwards. You then want to place a dispenser on top of the dropper which is facing upwards. Should be looking like this. Then you want to place three hoppers facing into the back dropper with a double chest on top. This double chest will contain all of your bone meal. Behind the double chest you want to place a node block and you want to place an observer facing into the node block. The bone meal from the chest will go through the hoppers into a dropper and when the farm is activated this dropper will fire it into the dropper in front, this dropper will fire it to the one in front of that one, this one will fire it upwards into the dispenser and the dispenser fires it onto the sapling. Okay, time to make this collection area bulletproof or TNT proof. You want to make a wall with a split in between. It should look like this. And on the side you also want to build a wall. Once you've got this wall, you want to place upside down stairs in front of it, just like this. To 
to make a TNT proof, we're going to add water sources to these stairs. This will create a wall of water in front of the wall. This water blocks the damaging effect of TNT. If you've done this correctly, then all of the blocks that you throw into this water will be collected in the corner at the hopper. To make sure that the entire wall is covered in water, we need to add a water source in the split as well. Do this by placing three temporary blocks, removing the middle one, placing the water bucket, then place the block back again and remove the temporary blocks. You should now have a wall completely covered in water. This farm will automatically break all the leaves that grow on the tree and thereby dropping saplings which will be automatically collected and dropped at your feet. To ensure this happens, you want to create a wall, then place an upper slab next to the dirt block with a redstone dust on top. Create a wall on this side as well and on the end, next to this slab, place a lever and flip it on. The redstone dust should light up. At the back of the farm, we'll now place three building blocks like this and a glass block in front of the piston. Next to this glass block, we'll place a chest. This is the chest we'll stand on whilst operating the farm. Place another three building blocks and a glass block like this. Place a top slab next to the chest and two building blocks next to that. This is the entry to the production chamber. On this side of the building blocks, you want to place a glass block with another building block on top. Place a stair facing like this on this block and a glass block behind it and a top slab on this spot. Place a glass block next to that and a spruce door right here. Your production room is now almost finished. All we need to do now is make sure that all the saplings that are created by breaking the leaves end up at your feet. Do this by placing a few building blocks like this and placing a water source at the back here. Then place a piston at this location with a spruce sign at the side and waterlog these stairs. Finally, place a water source in the corner here to make sure that all the water flows to you, meaning that all the saplings end up in your inventory. Time to start with the triggering mechanism for the leaf crusher. Place a building block with a redstone dust on top behind the chest. Place a redstone dust on the ground next to it and a redstone torch in front of it. Redstone next to it should light up. Next to this redstone torch, place two building blocks like this with a redstone dust on top and a redstone repeater set to two ticks. Next to the entrance, we've got two building blocks on which we're also going to place two redstone dust. After that, move back to the other side and place building blocks like this with a redstone trail leading up behind the piston right here. Finally, we'll place a piston facing the front, like this. Okay, time to start on the leaf crusher wall. We'll need a lot of sticky pistons for this part. We'll create a wall of sticky pistons of 6 blocks high and 4 blocks wide on this part, before adding a fifth layer to the back side and mind the irregular pattern. You might want to pause the video here. On top of the wall, you also want to add a stripped spruce wood in an L shape. Then move on to the other side, where we'll create a sticky piston wall of 5 blocks wide and also 6 blocks high. On this side, you also want to add a stripped spruce wood on top of the wall. At the back of these sticky pistons, create 3 rows of building blocks with redstone dust on top. In the end, these will trigger all of these sticky pistons to move inwards and crush the leaves. Do this on both sides. And before you move on, you want to make sure that these pistons are placed exactly as I do it right here. Otherwise this farm will not work correctly. 
time to work on the pushing system, which pushes the trees towards the front of the farm. Place a sticky piston behind the regular piston and then place a double row of sticky pistons on top of the redstone dust like I'm doing right here. Repeat this all the way to the top and then create a stripped spruce column on top of the regular piston which is right behind the dirt. One block in front and above this stripped spruce column you want to place a solid block. This block will prevent oak trees from growing very large which will break your farm. Time to hook the crusher on to the rest of the farm. Watch closely as I place down these building blocks with a slab at the end. And place redstone dust and a redstone repeater on top of these. Now we want to create a staircase going up using slabs. This ensures that the redstone remains connected. You want to remove those dirt blocks, which I forgot to remove. Now it's time to connect up a part of the pushing system using glass blocks and slabs like this. Move to the other side and close off the area using glass going from the top of the waterlogged stairs to the top of the pushing system. On this side you also want to create a staircase of redstone using upper slabs. Time to hook up the final part. This one is a little bit trickier. Place two building blocks like this with a redstone dust on top. Connect a sticky piston to this side facing upwards with a building block on top. Also place a building block right here. Place a repeater set to two ticks on top of it. Place a building block in front of the repeater and on top of the repeater place redstone dust on top of that and now we'll create a staircase once more to connect up this wall of the leaf crusher as well. Don't forget to place the redstone dust on top. Okay, on to the final part of the functional farm before we go on to the decoration. Place a redstone torch to the back of the block that holds your lever which starts the farm and build up 7 blocks and 7 redstone torches. You should end up with a redstone torch on top that is switched off. Add a couple of building blocks to this in this order and place a redstone comparator to the back of this upper block. Place a building block to the back and to the side of it. Place redstone dust right here. And then behind the comparator we want to create a system that functions as a timer for the TNT to drop at the perfect timing. Behind the comparator you place a redstone repeater set to 4 ticks and a redstone dust on top of this block. Another redstone repeater on 4 ticks another one with four ticks right here and lastly one on two ticks right there make sure that this is set up correctly otherwise your tnt will not drop at the right time next up place a piston right here facing upwards and a block of sand on top of it next to this piston place a building block with a redstone repeater on top facing to the front of the farm this block of sand is the only part of this farm that i just don't understand but it is necessary for it to work so do place this we will now create the transport system for the tnt to fall at the exact spot where we need it to Pay close attention and place the blocks exactly as I do right here.
add a water bucket to this spot to make sure that the TNT will flow down to this spot. Add a piston on this end and add a piston next to the repeater on the other end. And place a building block, a slab and two more building blocks on top. Don't forget to put redstone dust on top of these building blocks. The final step is to add an observer in front of this piston, facing the front and placing a TNT next to it. Then place three more building blocks like this. and add two redstone dust on these two spots. That's it, it should now be fully functional. All you need to do now is add a whole lot of bone meal to the double chest below, switch on the farm, you should see TNT start falling down and you should hear a clicking noise, which is the dispenser failing to distribute bone meal onto a sapling which currently isn't there. Head into the farm and start placing down your saplings to start operating the farm. Congratulations, you're done! For those of you that want to decorate this farm, stick around because we'll now start on that part of the tutorial. If you found this tutorial unclear, let me know in the comments below, I always try to help everyone out. And I'll also leave a link in the description to a tutorial of this build by Shulkercraft, who builds this in survival mode. Time for the decoration. First, we'll map out the layout of our building with stripped spruce wood. Each stripped spruce wood is placed in a 5x5 grid, so there are three empty spaces in between them. You should end up with six columns on each side and four columns in the front. In the back, we'll create some extra room for storage. Pillar up eight blocks on each stripped spruce wood. At the back, you need three block high pillars for the storage room. Connect the beams on top. On top of the middle pillars, you want to create another 8 block high pillar. We'll then move on to the roof, which follows a consistent pattern of stair, upside down stair, spruce plank, stair. You want to repeat this on the other side, and to connect the two, in the middle you want to alternate stairs and upside down stairs with a trapdoor on top to give it some extra detail. Make sure you do this on both sides of the build. Next up is the base of the tree. I'll freeze the frame right here to show you the dimensions. Build this one block up from the redstone torch from your TNT duper. Build this downwards so that it integrates into the roof we're about to fill in. Using deep slate bricks and deep slate tiles, fill in the roof and make sure you integrate this tree trunk into the roof. On the top of the roof, alternate spruce slabs and spruce trapdoors. Time to fill in the walls using natural stone, andesite and stone bricks. Surround the entire ground floor with this. At 
the back of the build, we want to create a spruce stair roof, as you can see right here, plain and simple. Make sure to put trapdoors on top. Finish the rest of the walls. On the second floor, we're gonna use oak planks to fill in the walls. Leave a gap of a 3x3 area in which we'll create a window later on. Make sure to do this on both sides. We will now create the windows. On the top level, we will create some bay windows. Place some spruce trapdoors with some leaves on top below the window. Place upside down spruce stairs alongside it. Some oak trapdoors in front. Some spruce trapdoors along the side of the window. And using some spruce slabs to create a roof. A stripped spruce wood with an oak button on top. And we fill in the window with some glass panes. There you go. Now repeat this on the other side. At the sides of the building, we'll also create some windows. Follow this pattern and fill in each wall with a window like this. On the other side of the building, you want to leave one space because this is where we'll put in a door. To make the tree trunk, which is on top of the farm, blend in with the build a little bit better, we'll create an extra root for the entrance. It feels like you're entering the tree. Make sure to put some lanterns alongside the build to make sure that no mobs will spawn around the farm. It's then time for the eye catcher of the farm, the tree on top. Build up and create a sort of bonsai tree using spruce wood and branch out in all directions. Now comes a very tricky part in survival because now you need to place leaves all around these tree branches. I like to mix up oak leaves, birch leaves and azalea leaves. Using some glow berries, you can create a cool detail and some extra light on top of the roof. Also make sure that you light up inside the build and create some extra storage using barrels. You can decorate the inside any way you like, just make sure that you don't interact with the farm itself or it might break. Finally, you can create some extra detail on the roof and on the tree using some glow lichen, some stripped dark oak wood, some spruce trapdoors and some extra leaves all around the build. And that wraps it up. Enjoy your new build, let me know in the comments what you think, like and subscribe if you want to see more. See you in the next one, have a great day and cheers everyone.